Okay, welcome to the Sword in the Tome. This is David. In this video, I'm going to review the standalone fantasy novel, The Folding Knife by K.J. Parker. Most of my review will be spoiler free, but after I give my general thoughts about the book and rate it, I'll get into some spoilers so I can discuss my favorite moment, as well as my least favorite moment from The Folding Knife. I should note that K.J. Parker is actually the author's pen name, his real name is Tom Holt. From what I could gather, K.J. Parker is the pseudonym Holt uses for his fantasy stories. But seeing how The Folding Knife has K.J. Parker across its cover, that's the name I'll use for this review. Alright, let's start with genre. I think political fantasy best captures it, but it's not court intrigue, which is the type of political fantasy that I'm accustomed to. The Folding Knife is more of a drama slash comedy. It's a tragic and humorous character study. Speaking of characters, the main character, a man named Basso, is the elected leader of a Roman-like republic, and throughout the story he gets tangled up in numerous political scandals and banking shenanigans. There's also a fair amount of war and conquest, but even those are all seen through the lens of the nation's treasury and Basso's personal finances. If there was a subgenre called financial fantasy, this book would fit nicely inside it. Because in many ways, the folding knife's tone and conflicts are more closely related to Scorsese's The Wolf of Wall Street than something like A Song of Ice and Fire. Sticking with genre, one thing I want to make clear is that there's no magic or mythical creatures or any other supernatural elements in this story. It's only fantasy because it's set in an alternate world, and that combined with the story's tone makes The Folding Knife a very non-traditional fantasy novel. I didn't have a problem with that, but I feel it's worth mentioning. I have mixed feelings about this book. There's a lot to praise, but also a fair amount to criticize. I'll start off with what I felt was the best element of the story, and that's Parker's prose. Parker is undeniably intelligent and insightful, and his narration has a distinctive erudite voice. It's been a while since I've read Vonnegut, but I was reminded of him while reading this. That being said, there was a downside to Parker's authorial voice, and that's the influence it had on his dialogue. Too many of the characters sounded similar, specifically the educated and high society types. For instance, Basso sounds quite a lot like his nephew, Bassano, and they both sound quite a lot like the much older Antigonus, and I could go on. Staying with the characters, there's definitely depth to them, and their conversations and interactions are complex and unpredictable. But most of the main characters are severely emotionally detached. Think of snarky Vulcans from Star Trek. It made the world feel slightly surreal to me. I could understand how that might not be an issue for some readers, but in my case it made those characters difficult to relate to and invest in. Having said that, after roughly the first 100 pages, some key character relationships do eventually blossom, and those connections made my reading experience much more enjoyable. For me, that's when the heart comes into the story. Like the characters, the plot was a bit of a mixed bag for me. The political and financial problems that Basso had to deal with were well thought out and believable, and his solutions to them were always brilliant and commendable. But for the first two-thirds of the book, Basso seemingly solved his conflicts without much effort, and I couldn't help but feel he should have had greater challenges and setbacks. Despite my criticisms, the folding knife managed to pull me in. It just took a while to sink its hooks into me, and once I was hooked, it continued to earn more and more of my affection right up until the end, when it let me down. Unfortunately, I can't explain why without going into spoilers, but I promise to cover it all at the end of my video during my least favorite moment of the book. By the way, The Folding Knife is ranked as a top 25 standalone fantasy novel according to an internet list I found. And it being on said list is one of the reasons why I decided to read and review it. I have a special appreciation for standalone fantasy books. 
and in case you do as well, I'll leave the link to the list in the description of this video. Okay, it's finally time to rate this book. I'm giving The Folding Knife three stars. And FYI, three or more stars from me means it was worth reading. It's a brilliantly written story, often entertaining, but it does have several aspects that don't play well for me, including its ending. I would have rated it four stars if the climax wouldn't have been so disappointing. All right, it's that time. Spoiler time. Stop the video if you haven't read The Folding Knife. And now for my favorite moment, and least favorite moment, of the book. Favorite Moment, Chapter 11, The Death and Will of Antigonus. While I'm sure lots of readers felt Basso and Bassano had the best relationship in the story, for me that honor goes to Basso and Antigonus. Basso and Bassano's relationship was tainted by guilt and obligation. Guilt because Basso killed Bassano's father, and obligation because Basso felt like he was indebted to fill the father figure role for his nephew. Antigonus, on the other hand, wasn't blood, and there was no obligation for either man to care about the other, so their love and respect for one another was actually pure and earned. And we learn a lot about Basso after Antigonus's death, like the fact that Basso had never visited his house. We also learn that Basso is the type of man to give a healthy sum of money to Antigonus's live-in servant, even though he wasn't instructed to. But the most memorable takeaway from that scene was from Antigonus's will, when Antigonus admits that he feared Basso may never be happy, that it might be impossible for a man like Basso to ever be happy. And for my least favorite moment, Chapter 17, Melsantha Revealed as the Woman Who Ruined Basso and Helped Kill Bassano. I was totally unsatisfied to learn his wife was behind it all. First and foremost, I didn't feel she deserved to be the one. If it had to be any one person, it should have been his sister. I also didn't buy her motivations. I felt they were too weak to justify her sabotaging her husband her husband's country, which also happened to be the country she was living in, as well as sabotaging her own life. And then, for reasons I don't understand, she admits everything she did to Basso, and calmly goes on to tell him that it was her actions that played a major role in getting his nephew killed. What? It's not that I wanted it to work out for Basso. In fact, I think the only way Parker could end the story is for everything Basso had built to crumble. But the wife angle and how it played out was just ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. I think I've said enough, and hopefully I've made my point. And I hope you enjoyed my review of The Folding Knife. If you'd like to listen to more of my fantasy book reviews, then please subscribe to the channel.